Oh, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Efficiency Bitch Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Leone. This podcast is dedicated to all the women out there who are aspiring to have a career while raising a family. And bitch? Well, that's more than a name and even an attitude. (laughs) We use it as an acronym. It's for bank, inbox, time, connection, and harmony. Each episode is labeled according to the correct topic so that you can efficiently find the topic that you're looking for. I'm here to tell you, you can have your cake and eat it too. The trick is finding efficient ways to get through the have-tos so that you can make room for your best life. I can show you how. Let's get started. Hey, Brad, how are you today? Good. Thanks for uh, having me on the show, Melissa. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, You have such an awesome topic to talk about. So we're going to talk about efficiency in health and wellness, and you are the perfect guest for this. So how about you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you, how you do life and where you come from. Yeah. Uh, So uh, Brad Williams, uh, I run a a business over 40 fitness hacks podcast and kind of stem from my personal training background for the last 13 years. But I grew up in California, kind of ended up in uh, Orange County, California, uh, always as kind of an entrepreneur in the business. And, you know, my dad was a medical doctor. Mom was a nurse, always kind of had that healthy upbringing and was all into sports and working out. Um, And then only later after I graduated college, you know, I knew I wanted to do some type of business. And lo and behold, I mean, this is one of my passions. So my brother and I opened up our first gym and went for it um, here in Huntington Beach, California. And for the next, you know, 13 years, it's just been a roller coaster ride of entrepreneur. You know, being a brick and mortar owner is way harder than being a gig worker, which I'm doing now. Yeah. But uh, just California business is real tough. You know, the competition here in Orange County is just like every other major city mecca, you know, where people are all into fitness, which is great, but it also is kind of a curse. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, my niche was always kind of the over 40 crowd. That's who I had. And, you know, really vibed with helping them out and the aging process and, you know, kind of the theme after COVID and all of us got pushed into the online world and we're doing online training. And then just seeing that, you know, at that time I had just turned 40 myself and now I'm having problems, you know, with, you know, movement and I've got a six-year-old daughter and a family and stuff, more stuff to take care of. I've had a lower back injury five years ago, just a nightmare dealing with that. Now I'm all better, but just everything more is now just more mindfulness, you know, more efficient, which I think will vibe with your audience too. And, uh, you know, just knowing that you, you got to spend more, more quality time than quantity. And that, that works for, for my business as well. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. I mean, I turned, oh, well, ooh, I wouldn't be 42 this year. So I think we're pretty close to the same age. Well, I'm 42 uh, but, now. So we are, <laughs> Oh, you, okay, you're older. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we certainly are, uh, aging differently now that we're in our forties and that over the hill thing is suddenly very, um, appropriate. I feel like I remember when I was younger hearing people say like over the hill around 40 and I was like, oh, I get it now. I think we're, uh, our bodies are shifting and things are changing. So I love that this is your audience. It's part of my audience. I certainly have a a younger crew uh, that hangs out with us, but there's plenty of women, um, mostly women, I'd say, that hang out through their 50s and 60s. So I'm thrilled that you can talk to this group. Everybody needs to know how to be more efficient in taking care of their bodies. I think in a world that we live in where everything is so accessible, usually by our phone, most of us spend our days like this, Mm -hmm. um, you know, head down. How do we, how do we self-correct? What are some of the things? So let's dive into some of your best hacks and tips on being efficient and working out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the, in personal training and working with clients over the years, you know, every now and then we would do, you know, I do a lot of circuit training, so it's a good blend of, of, uh, weight, weight exercises as well as cardio. Um, and then the, the whole theory of doing like negatives, you know, slowing down on the rep, going down, like, you know, in a squat, you know, Mm -hmm. slowing down, going down and then coming back up. Um, and it's kind of morphed, you know, we did a little bit of that, but, you know, as you age and, you know, over 40, it's a little, you know, harder on your joints to keep lifting that heavy weight to get the same outcome and you don't need to. So that whole theory of doing negatives kind of morphed into over the years, uh, what we call a uh, time under tension. So it's kind of the same theory, but it's also 
you know, not just slowing down on a squat, like going down to the ground, but also slowing it all the way back up as well. So you're constantly in that, you know, tension mode. Similar to yoga is more of isometric where you just hold the positions. This is you're moving a little bit slower, kind of like Pilates. But basically, mm-hmm. you're recruiting more muscle fibers. You're getting the more efficient workout. You can use less weights, which thus is less injury prone uh, mm-hmm. for all of us that are in the aging. And, you know, some of your younger clients, too, start listening because, you know, I started <laughs> having my first few injuries playing sports at 35 and it just comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And then it just gets just gets harder and worse. Yeah. So now now with all this stuff, with that whole concept of time under tension, you know, you can apply it to everything, bicep curls, chest press. If you're doing Pilates, you know, listen to your Pilates instructor, do it slower. You'll recruit more, be more mindful, not just doing it slower, but as you're doing something as simple as to stay with a squat, as you're going down, you know, really focusing on your breathing. Don't let your rib cage come out. Um, activate your glutes. Your glutes will activate when you do it like a deep squat, but you can clench them and get more out of them if you uh, focus on that. So just Hmm. Knowing that, holding your core in, and if, if any type of exercise you're doing, and you know, I used to do an hour long, hour and a half long workouts, and now I only do like twenty to thirty minutes because I'm so exhausted with this, you know, this mindset now of that time under tension. You just get so much more out of it, and it doesn't take much to get a hormonal response uh, from your body to oh, signal we, you know, we've got a, a stressor load on the body. We need to build the lean muscle mass to accept it. And, uh, you know, as long as you have a decent diet and high protein, you know, you build lean muscle and that's the name of the game. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm all about short workouts, like the, the little things I can do in between work and three kids and all of the other areas that we're, that we're juggling. So I love having ideas for fast, um, fast workouts that can be done kind of in pockets in time or in easy areas, right? So like if I met a volleyball practice or a baseball practice, which I seem to be all the days with my kids, Mm -hmm. um, finding things that you can do. And it sounds like we can do a lot of that without weight or lightweight, right? And and just flexing or- Yeah, just just mostly body weight. I mean, if you want to, after a while, you get probably used to that. So then go ahead and add a, you know, a few extra pounds and, but it's a fraction of what you would normally do or think you would need. Um, Another cool one is just, you know, I don't like a lot of cardio too much, but I do like walking. Mm -hmm. And so being more mindful of your walking. So I've learned, you know, there's techniques where you can kind of bend your knees a little bit as you walk through your whole gait. Don't let your legs lock out. So your, your quads and everything are being loaded the entire time. And then kind of doing more of a side skater. If anyone's ever ice skated or rollerbladed, you've got that, that push that kind of goes laterally. So just ever so slightly add that into your walking. Mm-hmm. And you just get more out of that, you know, that walking and burning more calories, more mindful of your, you know, other muscles like your glutes while you do that. So if you're going to do it, just, you know, get the most bang for the buck out of each exercise. And another thing I started adding is just, you know, weight vest, just a, just a six mm-hmm. or eight pound weight vest. Um, and one that's real comfort fitting and now add that to your routine. And oh my God, you know, I thought I was doing good with my three to four mile walk fast pace. Now you add that weight vest. And now I'm only going half the distance, half the time, and I'm just sweating everywhere. I'm just exhausted. I'm seeing more benefits from just doing that. So it's just, you know, little tips and tricks to kind of help you out. Yeah. Where do you find a weight vest? I, my husband has one, but my husband is a hunter. So he carries his weight vest so that he can, you know, get used to the pack when he's, when he's out hunting. But I've never considered having one just for a random walk. Where do you find them? Yeah, so I, I kind of did a whole episode of my podcast about that too, if anyone wants to listen to it. But, uh, you know, after researching everything and talking to everyone that, in other gyms that have tried it, and I found the best one and best bang for the buck because I didn't want to spend a million dollars. Yeah. Was, uh, it was called the Hypervest Pro. And uh, it's real thin, real form fitting. Um, there's not too much load in the front or back. It just feels great. Uh, and the best part is, you know, I had other weight vests that were a little bulky and they're walking around the neighborhood. I swear people are going to call the cops because they thought yeah. I was wearing like a bomb jacket. Yeah, that's what and my so husband I, looks like. He looks like he's wearing a bomb yeah. jacket. <laughs> so I started, no, I, I can't do this. I can only do it if I go to the gym, but you yeah. know, it takes the extra work now to, to do that. So now yeah. that I got this, I can put a t-shirt over it and no one even knows. Cool. So. All right, great. Okay, so we'll we'll put that in the show notes because I think I need to get one of those. I walk my daughter to school every day. It's kind of 
how I try to stay efficient in my workouts. I have a 15 minute, we have a tonal that we just recently Ooh, purchased. I love that too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. And really not that expensive considering, I mean, it's expensive. Everything is, but when I was considering all the time and energy and money I was putting into gym memberships, this was really quite a nice fix. Um, so anyhow, that's really been amazing for us, but I have like a 20 minute workout in the morning and then I walk my daughter to school and then I'm kind of done for the day because I don't yeah. sit all day and work. <laughs> that's the other problem is, you know, so if you are going to do your simple movements and your time allocated to it, just enhance it a little bit. Yeah. I love that. I definitely like the idea. I, I've tried ankle weights before and they're just not comfortable. Have you, do you have any experience with those? And what do you think on that? Yeah, I've, I've tried If you're going to go ankle weights, it's really better to stick with like one pounders, mm -hmm. like not to push that one. Cause you don't want to mess up your, your ligaments or your knees. Mm -hmm. Cause it does take a little bit of pounding on there. I think it's better just to have it all hugged up on top of your torso. And same thing with like holding weights while you walk mm -hmm. so much wear and tear on the, on the joints and your labrum. You know, if you're going to do it, use the lightest possible, like a one pounder. But mm -hmm. um, I think the weight vest is a, a, a better approach. That's awesome. Okay. So one of the other things that I'm looking to implement in my life right now is using some light weights while I sit in front of the TV. So I'm a huge Survivor fan and mm -hmm. Survivor starts tomorrow. The new season is starting. So every Wednesday I plan to be in front of my TV for an hour. Do you have some suggestions on simple weights or exercises that people could do that while they're watching TV? I mean, the best, uh, it's one that, that I do, and I got a little mini treadmill for my house. Um, oh. You know, you don't have to buy an expensive commercial grade one if it's just going to be you using it. Yeah. And then I'll watch TV on it or play. I, you know, I'm still a 40 year old that plays video games. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, but me going on there and being engaged while I'm walking, I can go like two, three hours. You know, That's and awesome. I told you I hate cardio, but when it's something else is engaged with it, it's just so simple. Uh, but as far as just sitting on the couch, you know, maybe, you know, just doing some close punches like you're boxing or something like that. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's been all this research done on, uh, you know, if you're in the seated position, how much calories you can burn by activating like your shin muscles. And so, and, you know, if you're one of those nervous twitch people like me, I'm always like we're sitting right here right now. I'm sitting here tapping my feet like I'm a drummer. Yeah. But that motion burns so much calories because of that. uh that slow twitch fiber that's in there. Um, and the other one is, you know, then you can go on the balls of your feet and just, you know, do little calf lifts. But just doing that is over time, if you make it a habit, I mean, it may be annoying for your your partner to watch that <laughs> all the time, but it does burn. It burns crazy amounts. Yeah, so it's, it's little things like that, right? I have a um, a band, like a tension band that I will put around my legs when I'm brushing my teeth. And I will just like do calf raises or squats or something, just extra little things like this. Um, and I never know if it's good, bad or ugly, but I do it anyway. Cause I figure the more little things I can get in throughout the day, the more efficient it will all, it will all be. Yeah. You know, another good one too, is uh, getting like a, a foam block, not like a yoga block, but something a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. usually something about a, uh, I'd say 18 inches by 18 inches. You can get them off Amazon. And, uh, you just go on there and you march on it, or you can do little baby jumps. So not very, you know, you're on the yoga blocks, a little safer for your spine. You can just sit there and do little mini jumps or just sit there and march. You know, if you don't want to get like the treadmill, like I was mentioning, and, oh my God, you'll be gassed after like 10 minutes and you just kind of make it a thing. You're watching Survivor, so You just kind of play around with that yeah. and, you know, it makes you kind of feel like you're part of the show anyways, but I love it. That's such a good one. I, that one I could totally implement. I mean, I, I imagine myself getting a treadmill and putting it in my living room and my whole family using yeah, it as a space gym. saver. My seven year old will think it will be, you know, something for him to play with. <laughs> yeah. But no, that was my, that was my COVID special was doing cardio at home and just using that block and doing little mini jumps and marching while I watch TV. Oh my God. Yeah. That's great. And how about with kids? What are the types of exercises you do with, you said you had a daughter, right? A young mm -hmm. child. What kind of exercises do you do with her? How are you, how are you keeping the younger generation active? Yeah. So for like younger kids, you have to worry about like weights with, you know, their growing growth plates and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, it's better just movement. So with like my daughter, um, even during COVID, I mean, I had the luxury of owning my own gym, but uh, you know, we would do a Sunday boot camp, and that'd be like kind of family day. Like everyone, all my clients knew that my kid was coming and they could do if they wanted. 
and my wife would come and we do a little hour boot camp workout. And then just having my daughter join in and doing like ladders or, uh, you know, doing the run with them. I gave her like a little mini battle rope that was just rope. You know, there's no weight to it, no yeah. risk of injury for her shoulders, but just, just movement. And then I started working on like ladder exercises, which is what a lot of uh, athletes will work on if you've ever seen that on TV. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that takes a lot of coordination. So the, the, the sooner you can implement that, you know, that just it, that just corresponds with when if she does do sports, hopefully data gets a, a little tomboy out of yeah. it. But um, it doesn't matter what sport you pay, play. Athletic ability is athletic ability. So if I can get that going in that movement and the quick change of direction, like using a ladder, you know, it doesn't matter what she does. She's going to be an, an athlete. And the main thing is I don't want to push her to, to do one thing or the other, but the fact that she's just active and she'll do some of this stuff is just amazing. So, yeah, that's amazing. I love that. My, my kids have an in-ground trampoline, which was our savior during COVID because mm-hmm. that's the only way they got their wiggles out. Um, but it's amazing how much work it is to jump on a trampoline. And I mean, they'll ask me to do it and it's hard. It's really exhausting oh, yeah. and hard and they can do it for hours. So I let them <laughs> Yeah, no, that's jump a as long good and as hard, as high as you can. And I'm loving this in-ground thing too, because I'm the risk of them getting Oh, injured. the thing collapsing and yeah. 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 A lot less scary. Well, Brad, this is amazing. Thank you. I love the work that you're doing. Would you let our listeners know how to get a hold of you, where to find you and where to listen to your podcast? Yeah. So it's uh, over 40 fitness hacks, four zero, not spelled out. Um, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you're listening to your podcast. Uh, and then my website is same thing, over 40 fitness hacks.com. And it's four zero, not spelled out. And that's just the best way to to get a hold of me. You know, I have contact form there and I write, you know, do some blogs and has all my episodes on there as well. So very cool. Well, thanks so much for being on. We will put the, uh, all the links in the show notes, as well as the products that you recommend. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for for listening. If you're new around here, please be sure to leave us a review on any podcast platform you're listening to. And you can always reach out to me to let me know what topics you're interested in hearing about, or maybe telling me someone you think would be great for the show. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at EfficiencyBee. Until next time, see ya!